Welcome to the Everyone Has a Story podcast. When I was first thinking about creating this podcast and really making it a reality, I went back to one of my many 749 stories that I've now accumulated and now recorded. And this one special story always stands out as one of the genesis of really starting this podcast. And the story goes like this. I'm meeting my cousin, who is 15 years older than me. We're meeting now in San Francisco to go to the University of Washington Husky Pac-12 championship football game. And leading up to this point, my cousin and I were never really that close just because of proximity of where we lived. But it seemed like over the past five, six, seven years, he and I, his wife and my wife, we started traveling together and really connecting more, not as family, but as friends. <clears throat> and he, me and one of my older cousins, was always one that would always tell a story. Like or not, he was going to tell a story. And if you brought up another topic, he had another story to tell. And so that always gave me an opening to tell one of my stories. And before you know it, our wives are walking away from our room because they're always, we're, we're, we're now telling stories that we've probably told each other now a hundred times each, and they've heard it a hundred times each. So instead of listening to it for a hundred and first time, they decided to walk out of the room. But anyway, we're now in San Francisco. He picks me up at the airport in our rental car and we're driving to the football game in Santa Clara. So we're driving south on 101 and we come up and we pass on the highway, a purple van that we know is going to be going to the football game because no van would do anything like, would ever be purple and gold like that unless you were a Husky football fan. And I told Frank because our parking pass was for the tailgate parking lot, I told my cousin that this is going to be the center point of this uh, parking lot. And he looked at me and kind of rolled his eyes, and he, but we're going. So we get to the parking lot and we can't get in because we're like 20 minutes too soon and they haven't opened up the gates yet, which I didn't know was a thing. So we had to kill some time. So we're killing some time going through this area around the football stadium. And we meet some other you would dub football fans. They ask us for a favor. We we do the favor, which is use our car. And they said, are we going to the game? We said, yes. They said, well, where are you parking? I said, we're in the tailgate parking lot. He goes, so are we. So he got on his phone. He called and told whoever he was on the other line of the phone was that save a parking place right next to the van because we've got all of our groceries that we needed here. And instead of carrying across the whole parking lot, see what you can do. So we get into the parking lot. And sure enough, we are now parked right next to that purple van. I mean, my cousin looks at me and he goes, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. So we get out. And within minutes, we are the best friends of everybody that are at that tailgate party. We've had a couple cocktails. We've had a couple of brats. We've sang the fight song for the University of Washington probably 100 times by now. And we're now starting to feel the effects of more alcohol than food. So we decide that we better get going to the game because it's a long walk. And, we, and if we drink anymore, we're probably not going to make it to the game. So as we're walking out of this parking lot, I kid you not, here sits a young man with a rickshaw. And my cousin looks at me and goes, can you believe this? So he goes, this is on me. So we hired this kid to let us sit in the back of the rickshaw. He pedals this way to the stadium, which we found out was like a two-mile walk. And so since we're getting there earlier than we thought, he's taking us around to where the U University of Colorado, the opponents, they're tailgating our. We went to see a whole lot more of the surrounding areas. He drops us right off at the gate where we don't have to walk at all very far at all and we get to the game we enjoy the game the huskies win we're now driving home feeling really good about the victory and about the whole day and we're driving now northbound to the hotel that we have in uh, san francisco and my cousin point blank looks at me and he says you know what cousin all of your life when we would get together you would tell some of the most ridiculous stories 
and you'd walk away. And when you'd walk away, me and all of the family members that had to listen to your story would say, does he really believe that we even think that that could be true? He is so full of BS. And I looked at him, I said, no, wait a minute. You've been the king of BS as long as I know. And you're now telling me that you thought my stories were BS. He goes, well, yes, because they're so far fetched. But now that I've been traveling with you for the last five or six years, and I'm being part of these stories, that I realize that they are true. And I looked at him, I said, you know, when we sober up, I'm going to have a long talk with you because I don't know if I was truly should be convicted of being a BSer when you have been the family BSer, king of BS for the whole time. So the point of this whole thing is that we all somehow, some way are connected through stories. And I believe today more than ever that the world in general is more divided than ever. I don't care if you turn on the TV, we have homeless issues, we have political issues, we have one nation that hates the other nation and are now at war with each other. You know, it, I mean, everything is divided with politics. So I, I'm afraid to tell anybody what I believe anymore because I think I'll lose my best friend if I do type thing. And I do know that, that stories have always kept us somewhat connected. And so today, episode number 200 of the Everyone Has a Story podcast, I have a guest speaker who believes in the power of a story because she's the publisher of her own book company. And so with that being said, let me introduce to, to Julie. Julie, welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. And Julie is the founder and publisher of W Brand Publishing. She's an author as well. But Julie, before I give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about you, please tell us what your tagline is for your business. Well, I think you're very familiar with that, Roger. My tagline has been is everyone has a story. You know, and so this is why this is so ideal for episode number 200. So before we get deeper into that, part of the podcast. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about Julie? Well, I am a North Dakota native and I'm actually in North Dakota at my mom's house right now. Uh, so it, it makes it extra special. Um, I have always been fascinated by books. I used to carry around books before I could read uh, because I loved type and words and the art. And so that made me become a graphic designer. So I was inspired by book covers. I did that for, and have been doing it and still do for over 30 some years. Um, I was, I worked in television uh, for a television production company, excuse me, and doing um, animation for graphics. And then I, I decided to have a change after 18 years and became the art director at Hachette uh, Books in Nashville which is uh, one of the big five publishers. And I really saw how publishing worked. Um, and so I, I did that. And then it brings us up to today. I, uh, I still do design, um, but my heart has always been with books. Well, welcome again. <laughs> so I need to tell another quick story about how we met. During part of the year, I lived down here in Tucson, Arizona. And just by chance, Tucson hosts the Tucson Book Festival, which is one of the major book fairs around the country here in the US. And so since I've been facilitating for over now four years an executive book club, I decided to go with the intent and purpose. I had two main things I wanted to accomplish, meet some authors of books, that they have written that could be a good read for my professional development group, the executive book club. But then I'm thinking, maybe I can meet a publisher or two that instead of me having to seek out new books, that they can lead me to their authors of the books that they written through their publishing company. So I scored big time. I walked in at one entrance and at the very, very, very far end, the extreme end of where I walked in was this little booth 
with W Brand Publishing on it. And I walk up, I start to look at the books. I start to talk to the staff behind the table of all the books. And I'm telling them what I'm looking for. They introduced me to this book. We featured a couple uh, weeks ago with Rebecca Black on Facing the Elephants. And by chance, she was there. So I'm now in a probably a 30-minute conversation with Rebecca. And then I'm talking more about how she got involved with W Brand Publishing. She said, well, the publisher, Julie, the founder, is right here. You were talking with someone else. I got a chance to kind of eavesdrop on that conversation where you were most helpful in helping that person really find his way around, you know, his idea about maybe writing a book and stuff like that. And just the way that you described the process and how you did it, I, I thought, boy, this is the right person I want to talk to because she she knows the business, but she has a heart and soul to help someone as opposed to just trying to sell them something. So Julie and I met, and before you know it, here we are doing episode number 200. So once again, I, I'm, I'm very excited about this podcast, this specific episode. So Julie, you've talked about how you got to this place in your career, but you have a really specific tipping point on why books and stories mean so much to you. So why don't you start off by sharing that? Thank you. Yes, I, I do. My sure. my company does have a very out of the ordinary catalyst. Um, I've lost a lot of loved ones and their stories um, uh, through through my years on this earth. And But the catalyst to start this company was when my 99-year-old aunt and godmother passed away in 2018. Um, and I realized, aside from missing her presence, her amazing presence, um, it hit me like a brick that all of her stories were gone. Uh, no one had written them down. And again, after 99 years on this earth, during very pivotal moments in history, her stories were, were gone forever. And so I spent five weeks up here in North Dakota with my mom going through things, reminiscing. And when I returned back to Nashville, the very next day I started W Brand Publishing. And this company is named after my dad who passed away from stomach cancer in 1997. And his stories, I really never knew. Um, I, I had been an art director at a big five company and I knew the basics of how publishing worked. And I also was very interested in the quickly growing independent uh, publishing space. Um, and so I ran a self-publishing arm of a ghostwriting firm in uh, New York. And then uh, I, I, I knew that if my dad would have survived, he would have been an author in the independent space. So the name and motivation all made sense to me. So I was determined then to tell legacy stories as the core of what we do, um, because those stories offer that positive outlook and that human connection. And I didn't want to lose, I didn't want others to lose the stories like I had lost them. And so my mission of everyone has a story is truly personal and heartfelt. Why? <clears throat> this is your business. So nobody would probably have a better idea than someone that's in this business of publishing stories. Why are stories so powerful? Wow, that's that's a can of worms, Roger. <laughs> <clears throat> because stories are. Stories are powerful conduits. They connect us, they connect us as, as humans. Um, stories break stigmas and show the disconnected that they're not alone. They they teach whether academic or business practices or just how to do life. Uh, stories have the ability to heal, to entertain, to evoke emotion. But most of all, what I see is they leave legacies for future generations. So personally, what have you learned from stories that you've lived through and that you've heard? Yeah, so I have learned that without stories, life is a very, very lonely place. <laughs> uh, being an introvert, I used to hide away with books uh, since I was really young because it was a solace and it was a I, I could go to anywhere in the world 
or other worlds for that matter. And then as I got older, stories showed me that I could accomplish what I could accomplish in life and in my career. Um, stories have so much power of connection and perseverance, and they provide motivation to go on. Um, the realization that we're not alone um, in all of our struggles. And there's always going to be someone out there that's going through similar similar things. So it's imperative for, for people to share their stories to help others realize they're not alone in their journeys. I mentioned earlier about how I believe that in today's world, we are so divided, unconnected. You know, there's wars going on, there's political issues going on constantly. You know, there's a great resignation. And I, I want to stay really focused now on really the the, the business community. Mm -hmm. You know, how can this ability to tell stories, relate to stories, how can this really apply now to the workplace that we have experienced ourselves and that we are hearing about today with, you know, the great resignation, the quiet quit, people not, you know, feeling good about the workspace that they had. Then with the pandemic, they were forced to be separated from that. And they came to a realization that being separated and maybe a little bit disconnected from the physical workplace is now an answer to that particular problem, but there are side effects of that. So how does connecting through stories, how could that help that particular problem? Well, when it applies to businesses and organizations, I, I always go back to um, Simon Sinek was inspired by Steve Jobs and the Apple Corporation's business model. And in that, in a nutshell, the concept was people don't buy what we do, they buy why we do it. Um, and his realization actually inspired his best-selling book, Start With Why. Um, so there are a thousand companies out there that sell the same thing, but what makes you choose one over the other one? And more and more people are swayed by the who of the company and who they are at the core, not necessarily that they're the cheapest or the most popular. So we're looking at things like if the company gets back, you know, who are the, the owners as humans? What is the origin story of the company? And how does that align with how I feel personally? Um, so we look at the company and the people, but we also look at the story. So my company is driven by that, that legacy of our core of publishing memoirs is the epitome of that personal stories of struggle, of empowerment, of overcoming and embodying gratitude, chasing hope, and knowing that what people are going through and to get where they are now, they, they, they might have to do some struggling, um, but they're not alone in it. So our story, our why, our mission will always be um, the deciding factor of how we make our business decisions of growth and scaling and acquisitions. So to be relevant and honest and positive human connection is always our goal. And I think that that is one way that we can, as business owners, stay connected uh, with not only our clients, but with our, um, our employees as well. So let's stay focused on those who's that you just referenced. How does telling that story, that unique story, really apply to being more connected, both as a manager to their employees or maybe a frontline employee to the customer or maybe the owner who sits up on that ivory tower and looking down and connecting with his uh, audience who is his really his staff. Yeah, you know, if a company, I think, in my opinion, if the company truly is living their why, if they're living their mission um, and their core beliefs, that this affects all aspects of the company, including how the company ladder is treated and addressed. So a company that cares about the mental health and the physical health of their employees may find that they retain them longer. Um, so open communication and respect for everyone, whether in the office or now remote. Um, it creates happier employees uh, who become advocates for the company and what they create or promote. 
So there, there's nothing ever wrong with having a happier individual. There's just not. So what are the real basic components to a story that is going to really make that gel between these two individuals or a group of individuals? Well, I think that that is, there are three things really. The relevancy of the story to uh, and the honesty. Um, and let's see, that was... Um, and there was a third one, but I can't remember what it is right now. <laughs> oh, the transparency. So it's it's basically being transparent, honest, and real. Um, and just if you speak from from where you're at, I mean, that's really going to uh, connect you with more people, uh, whether they're your employees or your customers, um, because people can tell. You know, it's funny how people go, oh, you know, the, uh, it, you know, the old used car salesman. You know how people would go. Oh, you know that salesman got a really bad uh, uh, <laughs> connotation uh, after that. But because they weren't, they were they were selling what people thought that they wanted to hear. But that's not what people want. People want to know who you are. And you know, you're talking about relevant. Anytime you know, as a business owner myself and a business consultant. You know, I'm always preaching the fact that if you really want to be relevant at whatever you're dealing with, whatever issue you're dealing with, you, you need to be 100% present. And we all have been in those uh, scenarios <laughs> where mm -hmm. we, we, we think we're talking to the audience. And when you all of a sudden start making eye contact with the audience, you can see the look of either their half asleep if not fully asleep or they're very very perturbed at what you just said and how you said it and i know you have an example just recently going to a, a conference in california and the speaker just really was not in the present moment with his audience can you share that yeah so you know that that is you know when you start looking out into uh, the audience and, and people, you know, like you said, I mean, they're checking their phones, they're doing all these things. And, and it really, you know, especially if, if you're speaking at one of these conferences, I mean, it really is a matter of, you know, these people paid their hard earned money to get there. So you need to really speak to who you are, you know, it's not, um, you know, and remember that, like, if you are at a, uh, the dairy farm, you know, a, a dairy convention, you're not going to start talking about um, almond milk, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like that. So in, in our situation, you know, if when you're speaking to <clears throat> people that are our publishers, or self published um, authors, you know, it's, it's not a good idea to um, just go over their heads and just assume that everyone should be part of the big five or you know that they should that what they're doing doesn't matter um because it does matter because all of our stories matter <laughs> so it really is it, and again it is just the honest the um the you know know your audience and be real and you know and again transparent and honest because when you're when you're there you have to you really want to i mean they could throw away their whole script and they could they should have because it is a matter of connecting. And when you don't have that connection, you know, when you start watching people walk out, I mean, I was, a, I was an adjunct teacher at a university. And when you know that you're connected to your audience and when you're not, you're not, you're really not. <laughs> yeah. There, you know, there's one thing looking out and seeing some people dozing off, which, you know, from time to time, you know, they just might have had a long night the before or mm -hmm. not feeling good or whatever the case overworked. But when people are actually walking out, you know, that that tells you that even the comfort of their seat is still not worth <laughs> sitting through this, uh, whatever the person's talking about. And that's a, a true indication. Absolutely. So, they voted. They voted with their feet. <laughs> they, 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 they did, didn't they? <laughs> now, I know that you do have coaching in your background because as a publisher, you help coach your 
your authors on how to really better tell that story in in written words. Mm-hmm. And 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 sometimes in the workplace, those written words are are very very important. But a lot of times our our connection is through verbal words. And so give us an idea, put your coaching hat on and give us some ideas of really what can owners do when they're talking to their the managers? What can managers do when they're talking to their employees? What can those frontline employees that are really dealing with, typically dealing with the customers more than the owners and managers are, what can they do to really more deeply connect in a in a caring, heartfelt way through a story as opposed to just bombarding the people with facts? You know, this is where we are with the business. You know, if we don't do better, we're going to lose the X number percent or, you know, the employee talking to the customer about all the benefits of this beautiful product or this beautiful service when sometimes like you said earlier you know we can hear numbers all day we can hear facts and stats all day but at the at the end of that conversation do we remember even half of them heavens no i think it's 12 percent that we actually retain if all you're doing is hearing facts and figures right but if you implement a story to help convey that message of whatever those facts are saying it now goes up to what 78% that you're more likely to retain what they're saying. So talk to us, what solutions do you have to help us tell a more unique story to help us connect and, and do whatever we're trying to do with producing through that conversation? Oh, sure. Yeah. The, um, you know, it's a, it's a big thing when, when people are, are writing their stories. So it is important to have some coaching because even if you know your story very well, you don't necessarily know how to tell it. So the biggest thing, again, you know, words do matter, whether we're speaking them or we're writing them. But the biggest thing that I can tell you is that, and tell everyone in, even to apply it on a business side, is that always stay focused and present in the conversations with clients and customers. So you're not only, remember that you're you're not, it's not what you do or why necessarily at that point, but who are you doing this for? So you need to find your true voice and a path that resonates with you, right? But that will help you find those clients and employees that have the same outlook, the aspirations, the goal, the goal, and funny that I would say gold because that's where you find the gold. <laughs> um, but also being authentic is always the best solution. So when you're, but really listening, that's the thing too, is I think a lot of people, you know, when they're, especially if you're trying to sell somebody something, right. You are, you're like, okay, I have a pitch and I'm going to tell them this. And then you realize that you. Oh, no. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Henry? Could you take him outside? <laughs> sorry, of course. It's like, the, what, the last question? <laughs> My dog freaks out. You know, and, uh, and, and that won't be the only dog that's ever walked through and uh, introduced himself into the in the well if he would have jumped up here and been cute it might have been fun but yeah <clears throat> could you yeah oh, okay sorry they're gonna take him outside um so rick where do you want me to start that segment over you want to just ask your question again okay okay yeah perfect okay i'll wait till he's out here He doesn't like going on walks with other people than me. So <laughs> he's a little spoiled is what I'm saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's let's talk about some solutions. You every day in your professional life, you you do put on the coaching hat to help them help your authors you know, refine their story and tell a better story. 
And so, you know, a lot of times in the workplace, there are words that are delivered through written, the, the written process. But most of the times, communication is done verbally. And that's really where the connection begins, correct? And so put your coaching hat on and talk to the owners now who are conversating, you know, having conversations with the managers or the managers who's having conversations with the employees or the employees who's having conversations with the uh, uh, the customer, you know, and tell them really how to craft the right words, choose the right words to craft the right story, to be able to go far beyond just the benefits of the product or service or beyond just the stats that the business is going through right now, but really connect. I've heard that 12% of all conversations that deal with facts only, you know, within an hour, only 12% is retained and every minute that goes by, that percent goes down. And when you introduce a story to help connect the facts to the audience, now all of a sudden that 12% goes up to 78%. And so put your coaching hat on right now and tell us how we can implement and craft better stories to whoever our audience is. Yeah, you're so right. You know, I'm, I've said it before that, that, you know, the words matter and, you know, it, it is different when you're writing, you know, like with emails, it's, it's, a, it's totally different than if you are actually speaking to someone. So my biggest thing when I tell authors and what I would tell business owners and employees and people that, that speak to the clients directly and the consumers is that you really need to stay focused and present in all those conversations with the clients, with the customers, you need to remember not only what you do and why you do it, but for whom you're doing it. So you need to really find a, your true voice and a path that resonate, resonates with you, like absolutely just with what you want to do and where your heart is, because this will help you find the clients, the employees that have the same outlook, aspirations, and goals. Uh, being authentic is always the best solution. You know, that that is, you know, the the, the key is, and I know that we've all been in those conversations where we're, we're, we're listening to somebody and we catch one key word and we're thinking about what our response is going to be. And instead of focusing on the rest of the conversation or the rest of the sentence that the, the person is talking about, we are, are just formulating what our response is going to be instead of listening. And so the, the reason that you stay focused is because that last sentence after that word that you know, that you caught on to and that you were forming your, your response to, that might have completely negated what they just said that you have already made your response to. So the big thing is just to be present, be, realize that every word that you say in response, you need to think about those things that come out of your mouth because you can't take them back once they're there. <laughs> so they're out there. And so just the, the big thing is, is really think of, you know, again, it goes back to honesty and just being real with someone. And sometimes, you know, I've been accused of being too honest, you know, for my own good. Like, you know, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't tell all that stuff. That's, that's TMI, but it's not because I think when I talk to people and I am honest and they see that I make mistakes, sometimes I misspeak or I accidentally flub a word. It makes me real because you know what? They do it too. So I think that that's the biggest thing that people need to think about is that, you know, let's, let's stop taking, you know, let's take these masks off and let's just be real. And, and especially when you are, whether you are managing people or you're, you know, frontlining with, with clients is that is people see it in authentic, you know, conversation rules, uh, you know, that that's really where it's at that, you know, they're going to be able to see through some of the the fake things and uh, in the long run, I mean, it just makes for happier employees, uh, managers, clients, uh, everyone's happier, you know, in the long run that they know that they haven't been lied to and they go, you know, hey, that was a really good experience that I had. So, yeah, our words do matter whether we're writing them or whether, they're, whether we're talking. So. Now, 
you brought up a, a very good point because when we are writing words, we are given the opportunity to do an edit before you hit the send button or before you publish, right? But when you are verbally communicating to a group or to an individual, you know, you don't have that editing process. You got to really rely on the filter system, right? And as we all know, we've met individuals who have different filters than yes. everybody else, right? <laughs> and so sometimes we've all heard the saying, don't hit send to that email when you're upset, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so what can someone do in your opinion? Because like you said, once something is said, it, it can't be edited. <laughs> you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. been said and it's now part of someone's history, whoever listened to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of coaching would you give people who maybe when they are being authentic and real, sometimes that TMI goes to extremes. Well, you know, that happens. That does happen. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that you can do, again, it's it's really that authenticity that and just owning it, you know, just go, hey, you know, I am so sorry. You did not need to know blah, blah, blah. And it just happened to, to come out. And I hope that didn't offend you. But it is something that was on my mind. You know, it whether it was relevant or not, you know, again, that goes to our relevance of making sure that <laughs> what we're talking about stays on path. But yeah, we do misspeak sometimes. And, you know, we have to realize that we're all human, you know, and no one can be perfect all the time. You know, that's what AI is for. <laughs> you know, and I think if anything else in this episode, which has been one a, a very good episode, so thank you. I think that that is really the key element here, because I think a lot of times, and I don't know when it happens, like I said, I'm not the psychologist, I'm not the coach, but somewhere in our lives, we are told you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't say that, you shouldn't act that way or whatever. And all of a sudden now, we lose our true self, our true authenticity, because we've been told that you should never do that. And so all of a sudden now we put up all of these fences around us that all of a sudden make us non-human. And I love the part where you said, you know what? Own it. You know, it 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 tells people who you really are. But sometimes those misspoken words, if they're really not hurtful, and you know, and I'm, you know, I'm predicating, you know, that they're they're not hurtful and not harming, but they're just you maybe just being a little bit too free with your words in a in a fun way, but it's really represents you, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden now, what those experiences do, they start to at least reduce the size of those fences or the depth of those fences. And all of a sudden, people might now see that person in a completely different light. So the future might be a whole lot more engaging and interactive because all of a sudden someone says, I still can't believe he said that. And I love it that he owned it, you know, you know, and before you know it now, you have a better relationship. You have a better connection because you know what? You said it the way it was, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I have a, a, a family member who absolutely loves the F-bomb. And he says it in a way that just, I mean, it's him. I mean, mm -hmm. no matter what, it's him. And, you know, sometimes when you hear people use that word, you can see that everybody is just, not everybody, a lot of people are annoyed and just how disrespectful. But because this has been part of his language for his entire life, and he's now in his 70s, everybody loves him about it you know and it's so easy to talk to this guy it's like it's like meeting a black lab you've never met a black lab that's never been a stranger right i mean the black labs love everybody and mm -hmm. he's that kind of guy because he's so open and honest with who he is and really that's the whole essence of being a good storyteller is just being open and honest and and just like 
you know, all the countless TV channels that we have, if, if someone does like it, they can just hit click and go to the next channel, right? Absolutely. You're, you're, yep. you're, not, you're not, you're, you're not going to connect with everybody and don't try. Yeah. You just have to be yourself and the people that, that you resonate with are going to, you know, gravitate toward you. And the ones that, you know, are offended for some reason, they don't matter for you. <laughs> move on, move <laughs> on. <laughs> Absolutely. So in closing, you just said some pretty, in my idea, magical words when it says words do matter. So leave us some, some final thoughts on really why words matter. You know, I think that that is the, the biggest thing. And I think, you know, other, I mean, different cultures, different places where you're at, there are, there's different vernacular that people use, you know, and so we, we need to be cognizant of that when we're talking, but it's, again, everything does come from that, uh, you know, if it's coming from an authentic place, if it's coming from your heart and this is like, this is my truth and I'm telling you, you know, what this is. You know, I, I think that that's what makes this so important is, um, you know, it's it sounds so easy, right? It's like our our, our tagline. Everyone has a story. Um, you know, it, it's so simple. It's why doesn't everyone realize that? And so in words matter is the same thing, because, you know, even now things trend and trending words or trending things or buzzwords, sometimes they they actually don't mean what they trend to mean. And so I think if we all just kind of step back a minute, you know, and, and think about the things that when we're putting out important messages, whether it's to our clients or to our customers or, or our employees that, you know, without being, you know, you can't, you can PC yourself to death, but you also need to be, you know, you know, take a moment and go, how is this, you know, is this a reflection of me, what I'm saying? Is this really what I mean? Or am I just repeating what somebody else said? So that that's the, the most important thing. And I mean, I can't stress it enough to be transparent and authentic because that's that's really where it, that's where it is, man. That's where it is. <laughs> where it is. <laughs> well, Julie, I, uh, I can't thank you enough for being my guest, especially on today's uh, 200th episode. And I know that we Thank are, you. <laughs> you're very welcome. And I know that we are planning a few more, so I can't wait for those. But in the meantime, if someone out there wants to get in touch with you, how can they uh, get in touch with you and um, meet with you? Yeah, the easiest way is just to go to our web our website, which is wbrandpub.com. And on there, you can, uh, my email is there on the contact list, literally my email. So it goes directly to me. Um, you can also sign up for our newsletter, which uh, we are getting better at sending. <laughs> um, but that is the easiest way. And and on there, you can read all about our, what we believe in. We have a section about giving back. We have everything what we stand for is right there. And uh, if it interests you or you have questions, yeah, please reach out. Uh, just, you know, send me a, a direct email and and I have no problem, you know, I want to educate people. I mean, that's a that's a big thing for me is to make sure that people know, you know, what it is, what makes a good story and, you know, what it what it's like to publish and what you need to go through and 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 try to to weed out the noise that's out there. So, yeah, just just reach out. You know, say hey. I heard that well, podcast. That was pretty interesting. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely it was. Very, very good. Well, thank you again. And uh, I can't wait to our next episode together. Thank you so much. Really appreciate being on your, your show. My podcast wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for my sponsors and my uh, great supporters. So let me take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them. First of all, I want to thank Rebecca at Custom Bookkeeping and Accounting, delivering trustworthy bookkeeping services since 2003. Dave and Dara at Virtues Matter, making this world a much happier place to be with their Virtues card apps, coaching, and workshops. Stephen at Buller Accounting, giving business owners depth and insight to their numbers. Eric and his team at Ivy Cat Web Design, the real superheroes of web development and design. Jennifer and Jean at the Seavers Real Estate Team, serving Pierce and Kitsap counties with their home buying and selling needs. Maury at the Maury Method, the world's only brainwave and trainment engineer, helping everyone have more clarity, less stress, and overall better brain health. Priya at 
Pivot My Profit, helping individuals and businesses have better control of their finances and more money at the end of their day. Melissa, at the Soul Vibe Energy High, the queen of the aha moments, helping individuals find those holes in their cups, repair the hole, and gain back their positive energy. And finally, Rick at West Sound Recording, you talk, they do all the rest. Thank you, Rick, for all your efforts with the production and editing of my podcast.